What's up guys and welcome to this. This is 25 years ago edition number 15, the big one five. And I'm joined by Brad, I'm your host LK, joined by Brad. Brad, you Dave Meltzer loving motherfucker, how are you doing this fine evening? Very well, I'm just um, just chilling really. I've discovered this new app, uh, Speaker, um, uh, Stereo, sorry, Stereo it's called, um, where I'm just listening to people talk on podcasts and stuff. And it's looking quite inviting for me to just do some shit on my phone. So if I do decide to do something like that, I will try and do something for the show. Maybe so, so, I'm looking so into what, it. What is it? Well, what is it? So it's called it's called stereo. It's 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 essentially you record speaking into your phone for like forty five minutes, an hour. But, but why would why would anyone do that? So it's basically monetize it. they can mo- you can monetize it. Yeah, it's a podcast. Oh, okay. Okay, well, fucking hit hit me up after, and then we'll we'll discuss that. We're here to talk about Raw because I'm in a much better <laughs> mood compared to watching yesterday, uh, compared to the WCW yesterday. This show, I'm gonna give it a strong time, maybe leaning in towards a weak win because I did enjoy the the flow of the show, and I think the way of watching WCW first and Raw second really helped this show. Like if it was just a standalone show, you might be like, ah, it was alright, but because of the bullshit from Nitro, everyone go check out 25 ago, 25 years ago, episode 14 that we did mm-hmm. yesterday covering Nitro from this day. I enjoyed it. What was your thoughts? Yeah, I would, I would go with a week when I actually quite, I, I don't see any any problems with this show really. I didn't find anything. It's nothing that was blow away, but there was nothing wrong with it. So I may have enjoyed it more than In Your House 6. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I can get that. I can get that. Um, the only the only big downfall I've got is the way I would have, um, you know, hinted at something that was coming up in this show that we'll discuss a return. Uh, but they just blatantly gave it away, which was a bit annoying. But there we are. I guess they're trying to promote it. Um, we'll get to that when we talk about it. But I think they're just trying to promote it to get yeah, a bit of vibe. But but but, but I've, I, I, you, you know the way you know I, you know the way I like to tease this stuff with Brian Pillman and that. So it kind of <laughs> just took the wind out of my sails a little bit. It's like oof, it's it's coming, and, and uh, yeah, it's going to be Ultimate Warrior. It's not a spoiler. It's oh. in the show. So it's fucking Ultimate Warrior from fucking 96 as well, not 91, everyone. So it's going to be an interesting one. Um, but we're going to be talking about the Raw from February the 19th, 1996. Apologies, we're a bit a bit late on this one. We will catch up. Uh, we're from mm. Cincinnati, Ohio. Building looks big and full. Do you have any of the attendance numbers? Sure. So it's going to be like this for the next three weeks. So it's going to be the same oh, show. Oh, is it another one where they tape? When do they? St- I'm guessing when they get to two hours, they stop doing these marathon tapings. Yeah, but this is another one. Um, yeah, and the next one's March 11th for three episodes, and then April 4th, first for three episodes. So yeah, you'll be in it for a while. They're going to be doing these marathon tapings. So this is going to be this building for the next three weeks. Um, but the building is Cincinnati Gardens. Its capacity is 8,500. So. That's pretty good going, I'd say. Yeah, nice it looked, it looked much like a yeah, much, much much bigger arena than uh, in your house, and a much bigger arena than Nitro. So good on you, Vincey boy. Well, it um, was five thousand five hundred for in your house, so it's three thousand people bigger. So yeah, quite, that's interesting how they, how they booked the bigger building for Raw rather than the bigger building for the pay per view. I guess I it was just the dates they were available then. Must have been, must have been. But yeah, I, I also you could tell it was live. It kind of had that live feel. Nothing can touch watching a wrestling show live, as in when it's been live, not taped. It just feels different. Like, anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation. You can write, really feel that when, when it's live. But obviously, with financial reasons why they weren't live all the time, I can understand and respect that. But our commentary mm-hmm. team, as always, is Vince McMahon and Jerry the King Lawler. King is, like, losing his voice. I don't know if he's doing too much commentary, but he needs to chill. His, his voice sound like he's going. I mean, they don't record that often, though, do they? It's like once every month, though, or once every couple, two or three times a month, they'll do a big long record. So it's not. But he's still wrestling, isn't he, Jerry Lawler? Oh, he's yeah, not. Yeah. He's at a USWA, if you care to know that. But um, yeah, he's still. Um, he still. He still does matches time to time in WWE as well. But yeah, he's a. Uh, he's still an active participant. So. I guess that is a bit too. I don't. I don't know. But he's not. I don't think they're doing it too much, are they? They're not. They're not overly recording, so I don't really yeah. know the reason as to that. But <laughs> no, if you want to see overproduced, go on the WWE Network and try and follow WWE full time. It is literally a full time job. 
trying to cover WWE, like, all the shows. Like, if because if you, you know, really want to cover every WWE show, you're going to have to cover Raw, NXT, mm. NXT UK, 205, SmackDown. And all the, all the independents know as well, don't forget. Oh, man. I mean, it's good for the network because it creates good value for money. But man, it's a lot of shit to try and keep up with. It's like, damn, I'll be just I'll just be doing Raw and NXT and SmackDown. I won't be doing NXT this week, but I'll be doing Raw and SmackDown and that's it. And the pay per views. Uh because mm-hmm. it's just it's too much. It's fucking so much. Anyway, let's get to the show. So I see title match, you have Ray's Ramon against Gold Dust, who's the champion. Uh the mm-hmm. story is Gold Dust basically wants to molest Ray's Ramon and Gold Dust beat him at Rumble for the belt. It's... And Razor Ramon wants Gold Dust sass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not literally. Um, we'll get to that. That's what he yeah. said. It is what he said. So the match itself, I I really enjoyed. There was a couple of uh, they both put quite a bit of effort in. Um, so there was, there was a beautiful uh, superplex, the fadeaway slam over the top from Ramon was nice. Uh, and then the finish came when Ramon did a, a a belly to back off the top with so much momentum it sent Goldust out outside of the ring, and he was like, "Fuck this!" Just grabbed his bird and walked off. Marlena and walked off. So Ramon wins via count out. He has a post-match promo, he being Ramon, <laughs> saying, I don't want your belt, I want your ass, which was very questionable, considering Goldust's character is very sexually oriented. Uh, which it's meant was to be a, a homosexual, isn't he? Like, um, the, um, I don't know if it gets like that point, but he gets he has um, tendencies that lean towards that way as well. Um, in the, uh, the more his character gets a bit more, he gets a bit more eroticised and a bit more... Um, cutting edge for that time he was pretty much an early attitude era sort of guy so when he start you'll start getting a bit more um i don't know what the word is um, yeah uh, sexually active like like (laughs) middle middle america bible belt parents won't like him put it that way yeah i think i think they're kind of testing the waters here to kind of see where this is going to go, but I quite I quite enjoyed this Gold Dust mm-hmm. character. I think he does a a great job of acting that way. It's mm-hmm. very believable. The makeup all the time with the face paint is great, and you know for its time, you got to respect it for 1996. That's quite a ballsy thing to do. You know, if they did that now, there'd still be a PR disaster. I don't know. They did it. I think if they did it now, it'd be, it depends what company. If it was an AEW, fine. But I think if WWE tried to follow that now, they'd. Uh... They'd get shut be, down. Uh, there would be a PR disaster. The stocks would drop. It'd be every, <sighs> everyone's fucking too sensitive about everything. Can't talk about exactly. nothing. It's just a safer bet to not get involved. Just don't even talk about it. But yeah, the match itself, I actually thought it was a really solid match. You know, you got Gold Dust mm-hmm. in there, Razor Ramon, two great wrestlers, Hall of Fame worthy talents, and um, yeah. re- I was happy. With it. I gave it two and a quarter. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the end of the count up, but I guess it's leading to the match at WrestleMania, isn't it? Between now, I know that match isn't going to happen, but I think that was the plan. Razor Ramon versus Goldust at WrestleMania. Yeah, because he kept challenging Roddy Piper, but I think he was challenging Piper to make the match at WrestleMania, not yeah. kind of challenge him to a match. It, he, I think he's definitely going to go work for Eric Bischoff with the way he cut that promo. <laughs> he had Eric's fucking... Don't get me started, Eric, Eric Bischoff's pr- uh, fucking promotion. No. Oh, no, God. No. But, but, but um, here's a spoiler. Um, that match doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, no, no, so, I, know, I know, I know, it's Goldust versus someone else, but um, yeah, it's going to be interesting yeah. why that doesn't happen if he's doing something else. But mm. yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, then we have Undertaker coming out of a coffin, um, which mm-hmm. just literally just that, and I love that little clips like that, just showing that you know there is stuff going on backstage, isn't just in the ring. Um, I've always mm-hmm. been a fan of that, and I I think that at this point the Undertaker character has only been around for about four years, so this stuff's quite new and fresh. Um, yeah. 25 years later, he's still doing the same damn thing. Um, and then we had Doc Hendricks with a WWF shop promotion. Uh, he then recaps In Your House, talks about mm-hmm. Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, announces The Undertaker versus Diesel is official at WrestleMania. So we're getting a card kind of being announced as we go, but it's the fact that they're really driving home the date. They're driving home the fact that WrestleMania is the granddaddy of them all, and they're driving home the matches. I think they're doing a masterful job, and a much better job than WCW has ever done at promoting these pay-per-views. Definitely, yeah. Um, I will spoil a little bit, though. Um, it's nothing major, but what date was today? The February 19th? Yep. This is the last Razor Ramon match on Raw. There's one more match that we'll see, but 
this is the last one he's got that's on Raw. Oh, okay, so we're never going to see Ramon again. Okay, but we'll... we'll see. We will. We will. We'll see him at a pay per view. But that's it. There's no Raw matches other than that. And um, yeah, we'll talk about that when we get to it. But um, I don't think he's in good favour um, with WWE. Uh, well, I think he he is just about to go into having a bit of animosity with WWE. So. Yeah, because he, cause he obviously everyone knows the, the jumpy, jumpy ships. Um, mm. And then we had, um, we're meant to have the body of Donis versus Barry Horowitz and Aldo Montoya, uh, but Vader just comes down and beats the fuck out of him. That's great. That's fucking great. I didn't great. care. <laughs> it was great. That, that, no, no, was... The, the, the Vader was great, but do you feel like you missed that match? No, Is that's that... the point. That's the point, though. It's like, oh, I don't really care about the match, but it got Vader over, so it was... Yeah. It turned a segment that wouldn't have mattered in all due respects. I really enjoy, I actually really enjoy Barry Horowitz as well as Aldo Montoya. Um, so I was quite looking forward to seeing Just Incredible and, and good old Bazza going in there. And I was like, oh, all right, cool, Fader. He looks like a badass. And it was great yeah. establishing him versus Yokozuna. They did a Yokozuna video package before that as well. I really dug, I dug it. It was just good, smooth shit. Like, that's the thing with this show. Nothing was spectacular. I wouldn't even recommend to watch anything from the show. But. It was just solid. Yeah, I'm not going to complain after watching the Nitro I watched. No, no. Um, Vader is also a badass. I, I love watching Vader. He's, um, yeah, he's he's going to hopefully take Yokozuna to a good match. Um, I mean, Yokozuna's not in the best shape here, but hopefully, which, you know, Vader and Yokozuna will be quite a big marquee match. And, um, yeah, we, 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 we've got that to look forward to. I don't... Um, I don't know. Would you? I don't, I've, I've not looked up Mania card. I don't want to spoil it for myself. But do you reckon this would be a match that they'd end up trying to get for Mania? What Yokozuna Vader? Mm-hmm. Didn't they already announce it at the pay per view? Didn't Roddy Piper say it's going to happen? Did he? No. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. I'm pretty um, certain. Yeah, if it does happen, because um, I'm at this point, I'm not really counting on anything happening because it seems to I mean, change week to week everyone seems to be changing promotions all the time here but <laughs> if if it were to happen then yeah that would be an amazing match can't wait for it to be fair touch wood and hopefully you could get, get given a bit of time but not too long um, and then we went to an Ultimate Warrior video package the second one of the night mm-hmm. and can I just make a point go on. about this go so billionaire Ted sketches are talking about the Hulkster and um Macho Ram Randy Savage being too old, right? Yep. They've just brought back Roddy Piper and they're going to bring back the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, is, that is true. It is, it is damn true. Um, it's, I don't know, to me it's kind of like they've always done this. It seems like 25 years later, where, you know, WrestleMania, they always try and bring back the legends, the Goldbergs, the No, Brock. no, but they're talking about them bringing back the old guys and then... Oh yeah, yeah. Same thing. yeah. They've they, the WWF always bring back the old guys, so I don't know what yeah. they're talking about. They use older talent more than they do younger talent, and, that, and, that, and 25 years ahead of this time, dude, in 2050, they're still going to be using older talent more than younger talent. It's what they've always done. So yeah, I don't understand why they're bashing WCW for doing it. But no. I mean, at least WWE make their stars. WCW kind of just stole theirs, so I can I can get why they'd be bitter, but the way they handle it is fucking embarrassing. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, then Sonny is sings happy birthday to, to the Mister Mister President on a laying on a piano in a very revealing dress, showing her cleavage. Um, yeah, get some attitude. Like, yeah, that's that's kind of it happened. I don't even know why I noted that. Uh, uh, Bob Backlund was in the crowd. He was campaigning for something. I don't know what he's campaigning for, but he fucking looked like he's he was brilliant, isn't he? Yeah, he was I, I love Bob Backlund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a. Uh, I hope. I hope we do see him some more because I do love. I do love Bob Backlund. He's a hell of a character. And then we had Marty Jannetty versus the Ringmaster. It was mm-hmm. fucking weird watching this. Um, mm. Seeing Stone Cold yeah. Steve Austin as the Ringmaster, so he's just very technical. And mm. it's going to be fascinating to see his character develop. I think that's one thing I'm looking forward to as we enter the '97, '98, '99. And I'm not looking forward to 99 onwards taking notes because just so much happens all the time. But mm-hmm. fucking with these shows, seeing Austin as the ringmaster, 
it's it's incredible to see how he transitions from that to being one of the most over wrestlers in the history of the business. Mm-hmm. That's fucking incredible, and I can't wait to see it kind of unfold. If someone told you that happened and we hadn't have watched that, would you have like believed I, that? I'd have been like, fuck it would have been. A... Be yeah. like, oh, no, no way, no way. Um, but Ringmaster so ring with the same Um yeah. It was solid. Um, there's nothing really to talk about. It was solid stuff. Star and a half, kind Aren't of. You? Yeah. Put over, put over the ringmaster, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, well, fuck knows what he's going to do at Mania, and and this is I can't be about says I couldn't give a fuck what Austin's doing in Mania at this point because I kind of don't really care about uh, about ringmaster, but who knows? Um, we then went to a mankind vignette, and for the first, oh, with the rat, yeah, this was the, what the first bet, the best one they've done yet. The a lot more production effort went into this one, um, just mankind talking to the rat, high pitched voice talking about his ear his face that no longer exists and it was a really really good promo i'm i really enjoyed it what was your thoughts on the uh Vip mankind vignette loved it loved it it was it brought around like a quite a crazy uh, manic character he, he's there with a big um like a, an actual dirty big rat uh, and it, it was just it was just creepy and and, and, and all sorts of weird and, and it, it was i loved it i thought it was i, I thought it was exceptional work um, obviously, I'm not. I'm not actually that bothered by rats. I quite like pet rats. What <laughs> you like honest, pet but... rats? <laughs> same thing. It's just, it's a big mouse or a big hamster. It's the yeah, same thing. I don't. I don't have a mouse or a fucking hamster. That's disgusting, man. Rats do I not to... belong in a fucking cage. <laughs> they belong in the fucking open, going through dirty people's bins. That's what fucking rats are there for. Not fucking being in your hand in your house biting your fucking wires oh fucking man that's gross like fair play to anyone who actually owns rats and if you like rats good for you dude but quite a fair people do yeah so. but man if i go to a house and i see a rat the first thing i'm going to think is you unhygienic motherfucker that's the first thing i'm going to do because i just find it fucking sketchy no, i had a hamster which oh, is similar. hamsters fine they're just like little adorable little things rats just are just oh man like I've never looked at a rat and gone, oh, I want one of those. I want one of those. I'm like, no, oh like god. Them. Did you know? Here's back. a true fact. Here's a true fact. You know, in World War Two, yeah, because the rat's weight was quite small, they would actually use, and the noses were very good or better than dogs. They would actually use them to go out and sniff out for bombs. I so mean, rats are rats are actually very helpful. I mean, if I ever get in a bomb fright, I know I'll go to you to get a rat. <laughs> it's alright if you if you want these weird sort of factoids I have no idea what's going on on Raw this week but if you if you want these weird sort of factoids come to me I guess um, so then we went to the main event of the show we had Tatanka versus The Undertaker now this one before we get down to breaking the match why the fuck is Tatanka with Ted DiBiase I don't know I've read you uh, reports where he's being managed by him but actually explaining why they're together I have zero clip I can't, I, I can't believe it I'm just watching this like why on God's green earth is Tatanka paired up with Teddy Bills like the ringmaster makes sense Tatanka's just like why like and, and listening to Tatanka come out to the million dollar man's fucking entrance song is criminal it's criminal mm. he's like the reason why it's over is because of his badass kind of what was it uh, Native American is that Native the right word? Indian Indian Native American yeah, yeah. Interchangeable. Yeah. yeah. It's they they come out and he does the dance and the crowd dance too and they everybody loves it. No, he's what did he did Teddy Biosi buy him? Who knows? That must have sadly this is not a twenty six. For some years reason, for some reason I've got a feeling that it's gonna be I know it's gonna sound slightly um racialized, but it's WWE so of course it is. I reckon it'll have something to do with a casino and money. You know, Native Americans, casinos, Ted DiBiase being a billionaire. I reckon it would be something to do with that, but because yeah. he's 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 everything that he he's got has to do with money, and obviously WWE aren't the most subtle at this point. You know, they they call someone getting attacked from behind a Pearl Harbor. Oh, so, that's tragic. That's fucking yeah. awful. That is they, awful. That's, what, that's that's their verbiage, not mine. But yeah, I reckon it's something to do with the fact of like casinos and. 
being Native American and that, but <laughs> I don't know. I'll watch a video about it because I love finding stuff like this about and I'll sort of report back, but yeah, I've I got mean, a strong see, feeling that if, that's what it could be about. I think you're probably <laughs> right and it'll be interesting to see if that actually happened because shame on them if they did. Uh, but one thing I did really like about this show is that it's the main eventers against the mid carders. So when we get a pay per view and it's main event versus main event, it feels like a bigger bigger match rather than on WCW where they give away main event versus main event every fucking week and every week there's a world title match. It's it's nice. It's refreshing. It's how you get people over in the long run. Like short game, you do what WCW do. Long game, you do what WF are doing right now, which is why they eventually. And which won. ones are still here? Exactly. Yeah, literally. Uh, so Diesel came out with a hammer during this one. He grabs a cameraman. They so do a good. double feature. Yeah, this is really good. They do a double feature, and one side is live to Tanker and Taker, and the other side is Diesel smashing the shit of the coffin, which Undertaker came out of earlier. To Tanker, he got a pretty decent amount of offense in. They didn't make him look like a job. He got given quite a bit of time. Taker at the tombstone got the win. Very solid match. Taker then sees the mini Tron they got there on the Raw logo. And uh, runs after Diesel, who's fucking up the casket. I give it two stars. I thought the match itself was was all right. It was pretty acceptable, and I'm looking forward to Taker and Diesel. I don't know if it's a stinker or not, but I'm looking forward to it. Oh, the bill for it's going to be good. I don't I don't know too much about St- Diesel's wrestling ability. Um, I think he's better at being uh, in character than he is in the ring. But he is an, he's a hell of a performer as in character. And watching him destroy this this big casket thing was 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 brilliant to watch it was you know, it re- reminded me of um well that and the cactus jack promo reminded me of a uh, ecw uh, that we've been watching sort of the type of stuff that they do in their backstage stuff which yeah. um mm-hmm. yeah which is something that um i think might have been borrowed from it but good on them for borrowing it because it's good quality i can roger that it was it was fun it really really was mm-hmm. and diesel coming out there he looked like like we said he looked like a badass and mm-hmm. he, you know, nicking the cameraman, not just going and just smashing it. The fact he went and nicked a cameraman, I think, just is a beautiful little yeah. touch. It's not done Told enough. Told to film it. Yeah. yeah. Like, because that's what in reality would happen if it was a shoot. If it was legit, you'd want to grab a cameraman and show him what he's done. And it's just a shame that the Tron isn't um, bigger. Because <laughs> poor Taker had to get his fucking binoculars out to see the fucking little Titan Tron there. <laughs> Exactly, but yeah, it's only a small. It's only um. Well, I say it's it's only a small company. No, it's only a multi-million dollar company at this point, not a billion dollar company. So, yeah, I mean, they weren't it's, in the best financial state, though, were they at this point? Oh no, this was just after the steroid trial, wasn't it? Vince nearly went to jail, didn't he? Yeah, and he uh, yeah, because he uh, had a doctor that got found out for supplying them including Vince McMahon by the way with steroids and Hulk Hogan and all these people so yeah he, uh, I think that was like eight, like 18 months before this oh, so yeah that's, that's some <laughs> PR for you Vince that's some PR for you and yeah. then the show finished with a Larry Fling Larry Fling yes nah this was terrible I was like borderline offended to the point where Ted Turner started talking well not Ted Turner a guy portraying Ted Turner I turned it off I was like, I don't oh. want to. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I felt I so watched offended. it. What, what I happened? Because I, I, I so heard him go like, her, 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 and I was like, I'm not watching this again. Mm-hmm. So essentially, the the um, Naxter or Hulkster or whatever he's called called in, and you know, he was talking about the fact that everyone thinks he's old and. Um, you know, he's, he thinks he's past it and all that. And then Randy Savage came in and he came out about wife troubles and that he kept being attacked by someone's shoe and that he needs to take this week off Nitro because he was attacked by a poor woman's shoe, which I thought was actually quite funny, that line. But the actual whole of it was just really cringy and horrible. Uh, well, not horrible, didn't offend me in any way. It's just her- really cringy. Um, and yeah, next week they've announced that they're going to have the Naxter and the macho whatever he is on next week as Larry Fling's guest oh my god they're still do- I'm sorry I'm not watching these anymore I'm not watching them they offend me too much <laughs> they offend me they're fucking they're so you know, bad. Don't, don't be going snowflake on me but... oh, I'm going to snowflake the shit out of it it's fucking terrible it's honestly so bad like I can t- I, yeah. I would rather have Eric Bischoff promote the WCW pay-per-view schedule to me than watch the Larry Fling edition, and you saw how angry I got at that last uh, yes last night because that was fucking tr- that that was fucking 
awful. Mm. The way fucking Eric Bischoff on commentary promotes those fucking pay-per-views. But that's what I like about this show. It was simple. We have one direction, WrestleMania. Not to beat WCW on the TV numbers. It's, let's get some WrestleMania pay-per-view buys. And the whole show, mm-hmm. the whole point of it was to promote the shit out of the WrestleMania 12 pay-per-view, which is coming up in March. For WCW pay-per-view, we don't even know the fucking date yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. So, WF here, wins this week. Congratulations, mm-hmm. Vince. Take the win. Continue the momentum on the road to WrestleMania 12. Stop doing them bloody sketches. I know, I know you won't, but stop doing them. Yeah, but I yeah. How long what, this is going to last for? I wonder how long this is going to last for these sketches. Well, you've got you've got fake Razor and Diesel to come yet, so oh, you know. yeah. But at least that's, that's during a two-hour show. I can just kind of hit the plus ten and skip it when there's only three matches. I don't want to skip any matches. So roll exactly. on when the show. I can't believe I'm excited for the show to be two hours long. I really, really exactly. am. I really, really exactly. Am. So, um, do you want the match, the card for next week, then? Yes, please, sir. So, um, the the matches you missed, but they are dark matches, so I'll just say the results. Drew the Drumster Drozzy defeated Hunter Hearst Helmsley in a steel cage match, which sounds terrible. Ahmed Johnson defeated the British Bulldog, which sounds all right. And Diesel and Shawn Michaels defeated Jake the Snake Roberts and The Undertaker, which actually sounds pretty cool. The Undertaker had two matches, then. What was that? Whoa, 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 what was that? The dark match. So Diesel and Shawn Michaels what, defeated Jake. Uh, the dark match for Raw? Yeah, before, the, it, before thought, it started. So they did a dark match, and then they taped three hours worth of TV. Three dark matches. So they had Duke Joseph defeated Haunter Hell Sounds in a steel cage. Armour Johnson defeated the British Bulldog. Diesel and Shawn Michaels defeated Jake Roberts and The Undertaker. Then they had this show, then they had the next show, then they had the next show. So that would have been Oh, about. those fucking poor boys. <laughs> oh, man. That's a lot of television. Exactly, but they they just bash it out in one one go, don't they? And for the month, and then they relax. So, oh, they don't relax. They have tons of house shows, but oh. it's the beauty of working in WWF, I guess, as opposed to any other promotion. ECW, they get one every two weeks. <laughs> so, <laughs> we could have <laughs> out to have work. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, they're probably happy. The talent there are happy with the amount of house shows they probably got. Um. Yeah. So, exactly. anything anything else was there? A, a superstars or anything? Oh no no the, no no the superstars was before. In your house, wasn't it? In your house was only oh, yesterday. 24 hours prior, 24. Yeah, correct, correct. What matches yeah. are taking place next week? So we got Jake Roberts versus Isaac Yankum DDS, which <laughs> is Kane. <laughs> okay. Bob Holly versus Diesel, which is Hardcore Holly versus um, Diesel, which sounds pretty cool. Shinobi. Do you know who Shinobi is? Recognize the name. Al Snow. Okay. Versus Ahmed Johnson. Oh. Which sounds cool. Uh, uh, that sounds alright to me. Two on one handicap match. Owen Hart and the British Bulldog with Jim Cornette versus Yokozuna. Which makes now sense. Now we're talking. That's, that's some good shit. That, 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 yeah. that I'm looking forward to. Exactly. And the next ECW show we've got, and I can say this match because I've looked it up and it's fine. So Joel Hartgood and JT Smith versus the Bag Crew, which is Dog and Rose from last week. Stevie Richards and the Blue Mini versus the Pitbulls, which sounds cool. Bill Alfonso versus Todd Gordon. Oh. Fuck, fuck off. Uh, Mikey Ritwet versus Alberto Ricano. The Eliminators versus Bubba Ray Dudley and Hart Myers in the World Tag Team Championships. The Sandman versus Axel Rotten. Sabu versus Two Cold Scorpio. Cactus Jack versus Bam Bam Bigelow. Ooh. And Raven versus Shane Douglas for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. Come on, Shane. Come on, Shane. Come on, Shane. What, 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 we'll do that show on Friday. What's the actual name of the show? Just Another Night. ECW Just Over Night 1996 will be reviewed on the Friday because I'll be moving house. And I'm looking forward to moving house. I very, very much am so. Um, it's the fact that I'll have a much bigger space and I'll be able to record whenever I want uh, because mm-hmm. there's going to be an actual kind of office area and I've got a new desk coming. And Just get you ad- your proper adult in. Yeah, <laughs> Love it's, it. it's t- time for me to become an adult and get out of my fucking flat and get into a house. So with that in mind, thank you guys for watching our favourite and your favourite series 25 years ago. We'll be back. We'll be back soon with episode 16 and then we're gonna have to do catch up on nitro and raw which will be fun so with that in mind Mm -hmm. thank you for watching like comment smash the subscribe button do the business stay safe stay well and we'll be catching your asses